perfect. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for having us. Um, so this is our water infiltration test comparisons. I'm Isaiah. I'm Michaela. And I'm Gabriella. Yeah, we're from Springwood High School. Okay. So this is our um, Horacio Fernandez Tiger Pocket Perry. That's the name we have right now. He, uh, it's named after our retired uh, administrator. He's he retired last year. He has been working with Springwoods for 30 years. Um, so these, we created this pocket parry uh, December of 2020. Uh, it's approximately a tenth of an acre. Uh, first, we had to clear the field, uh, and basically it was just removing anything that was on top of it. Um, and then we put cardboard on top of it so then it could kill the grass, and we have a uh, clean uh, setup to start with. So after we clear the cardboard and remove them, we use three dump trucks of soil. We dumped them in um, and then just started spreading 14 pounds of seed and uh, approximately 150 plugs of plant. So for maintenance, uh, we would monthly clean up um, any weeds. Uh, and wanted plants, also so we can have a proper path to walk through. Uh, so this would also increase the biodiversity of our pocket prairie. Uh, so these are just current photos. Of this was two weeks ago. How they the pocket prairie looked like. Uh, sorry, the students. Uh, yesterday we were also cleaning some. The, the path and then removing any invasive species that we didn't want. So we did an infiltration lab. Um, if you don't know infiltration, the movement of water through soil. Um, we had students use a four inch PVC pipe and pounded the ring a few inches into the ground. And we poured um, a certain amount of water and we timed the rate of infiltration both within and outside the pipe. So this is the lab that we got from the um, test. Oh, PP stands for pocket prairie and others outside of the pocket prairie. And as you can see, the infiltration time inside the pocket prairie is significantly faster than the location outside of the pocket prairie. Um, so basically with that data, it's clear that, you know, the infiltration rates inside of the pocket prairie were a lot higher than outside. And that's just because outside of our pocket prairie, you know, the soil is more compact, that's where students are. So it's a lot harder for anything to get through the ground. Um, if you saw on the data tables, it was like, some of them were like five minutes plus for draining. At some point, it was like the water would just sit there. It wouldn't even go into the ground. Whereas inside the pocket prairie, it went in like right away. We even redid the test yesterday, just to, or two days ago to see what happened and it was so much faster inside of our pocket prairie versus outside just because of all the vegetation and the roots inside of our pocket prairie that um, help like loosen up the soil, make it more permeable to help the water infiltrate a lot faster and easier. Um, and so with that, we basically were just able to like determine that pocket prairies, wetlands, water retention ponds, and any vegetation really in like really urbanized areas just help decrease flooding, which is the problem in Houston that um, occurs often, more often than it should. So um, just plant, like having a lot more vegetation and green space and pocket prairies and like urban areas near big waterways is really helpful to prevent flooding in our city. Um. This is how our pocket prairie looks not like right now. There's definitely more color than how it started. Uh, and, oh, and then on the pocket prairie, we've seen a lot of wildlife. We've seen um, 
pollinators, uh, reptiles, and we even saw um, oh, a rodent house, kind of, we think it's a rabbit, uh, we haven't really seen it, uh, but yes, you could see little holes there around the area. Okay. Could you go back to your data slide, please? Yes. Because I mean, yeah. yesterday we, or was it two days ago? I think. Today. But we was like um, throwing out more seeds. We just like threw the seeds into like where it was already planted. So I'm pretty sure it was just like, go be free. Yes. <laughs> and y'all planted and did your studies? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was that looking? <laughs> is your prairie a, like a usable space by the school or is it just something yes. you need to look at? Yes, so our school is open, like there's a bunch of space, it's open campus basically. Um, so a bunch of students during lunch just go there to hang out and uh, usually there we just, after school we clean up everything and start like taking out weeds and everything. Uh, and everything we don't want. Uh, usually we just go back and start actually planting stuff. We put them in spots that need more green or more uh, flower color. Do you other classes use your prayer um, for learning activities or educational? Yes, I think because uh, we're in the environmental, the AP environmental class and so we use it in the other day um, systems. Environmental systems uses it as well, and I think the other classes just like near because it's like right outside of our like chemistry buildings and stuff. And I think every once in a while they'll use it, and I know some other clubs like uh, we have like the Woods Project, which is an outdoorsy group. I think they're out there a lot as well. I had, I had a question. Um, you have really powerful data there, and I'm just wondering, do you have any plans to kind of take that out? I don't know if we like for sure have, but that's a really yes. good idea. Yeah. Yeah. People love this is like real live data that someone in their home that just got flooded out of their house mm -hmm. can really relate to. Yeah, in our so free branch, there's yeah. You know, during Hurricane Harvey, there's a lot of flooding from the bayous, and so I think yesterday we actually talked about how we could implement things like this around the bayous, just because there's so much concrete now, and like build up that if we put more vegetation, it would be able to go into the ground easier, and there wouldn't be as much flooding, and not so many people would have lost their homes from something that could have been prevented a lot easier. So I didn't understand how did you how did you plant plant it? Was this a combination of clubs? Yes. Where did, where did you get those? I just want to chip in as well. So I was going to say we want to thank Westside because uh, it was actually a collaboration. So Westside actually donated some of the plants, half a tray of the plants from Westside, uh, particularly Eastern Gamma. If anybody wants some Eastern Gamma, we have yeah. some too, and it's beautiful. Thank you, Westside. And then they did get a grant for American uh, Native American seed. And then we also had Susan Conti, whose picture was up on the picture there. Um, as they cut the burn breaks at Nash, they raked up a micar bowl of uh, hay, and that was put down on top of the seed. Plus, go around your neighborhoods and pick up all your pine straw. Pine straw is really good for keeping seed on the ground. And these are all techniques that you know, people see have been teaching everybody to do. They work really well because that's how that prairie looks now. There's no irrigation, by the way. No. Nor does it need. This Gamma is 10 foot tall right now. That's pretty cool. And a lot of it is also thank you to Ms. Julie who comes out every once in a while to help us with it.
Can I just put in another plug for Julie? <laughs> uh, she is a powerhouse. She goes, she's like the uh, pollinator bee of pocket prairies. And she, her fingers are, fingerprints are on a lot of these spaces. And it's been a real joy to see her help so many people. So. could help better infiltration because infiltration is basically the help of the roots of the plants. They create more space, area, um, so actually water can go through the soil.